Chapter 16 Vignettes The Grey Mare Mail Mare read a cupcake. The eyes of the Pegasus wobbling around as she passed her the letter. As the Pegasus pony winged away, Cupcake let her gaze fall across an unfamiliar name that sat in return in her dress. She opened it gingerly and laid it before her on the floor in the sunlight. As she sat and began to read, the words became wired to her perception. Dear Mrs. Kink, it read, I am writing to console you on the passing of your father, Corey, these ten months ago. I am sorry to reach you on this matter so late after his death, but it has taken me so long to come to terms with it myself. Cupcake felt emotions rising up in her as she read the letter. As this complete stranger explained to her how her father had played a part in his life, how they had been partners, how he lied to her far father, how her father had reacted in a typical fashion of his younger days. I still walk with a limp, the letter continued. For most of my life, I've lived in both fear of your father and anger at his act that scattered my, shattered my body, and it's shame for what I did to him that set us upon that path. Cupcake felt herself wavering on her hose as she dealt with the conflicting emotions that the letter was bringing forth. It got only worse as it continued. My son informed me more than a year ago that your father was to make amends and asked him to say hello in a genuine fashion, the letter went on, and for months I was staggered by that fact that your father was extending an olive branch against everything I knew of that stallion, or more accurately, everything I convinced myself was true. Kekke self went to her mouth. In the end, I was very much to write to him, but I could find no words. That he would want to, I had hope, as for forgiveness and offer it. That was more than I could comprehend. I had made my life by using ponies to my advantage. When we had our altercation, that world for you was shaken. It forced me to rely on others. In many ways, his dressing me was perhaps the best thing to happen to me. And what I took was his attempt to rectify the gap between us seemed to complete the act. Her eyes went moist as he continued to read. The pony who sat down to write you this letter is not the same one who your father detested, but is instead one that I could only hope to serve the forgiveness he seemed to be offering, and that I would certainly have given. I am only saddened that my hesitancy cost me the chance to present this letter to him, instead to deliver it to host at some point he undoubtedly loved very much. Most sincerely, the letter concluded, Penny Pritcher. Cupcake gave a little huff of emotion as she looked at the letter and took it to the office. There she studied it again, ran her eyes over the words, and tried to begin writing a reply. Instead, she found herself once more trying back out into the showcase room, making long elliptical orbits of a display of macaroons before seeing once more in the sunlight that came in through the window. Ten months after his death, her father's life was reverberating. The strings of causality still pulling into ponies he had encountered across his decades. You know, I kind of like it like this. Let the funeral happen off screen and just let us take it all in. Take in his death. That's just a normal way of life. Some pony he undoubtedly loved very much, she repeated to herself. At once, a memory lifted through Cupcake. Corey looked at her in a vast hug as she presented him the cupcakes that had revealed her mark. The memory of his four legs around her as he had scooped up his little cupcake. That feeling washed through her as her tears began. She sat there sniffling in the sunlight, while she very much required to return home from his errands, very much wanting to bury her head in her husband's chest and let him embrace her. Though not as intimate, a figure that was also dear to her presented herself as Pinkie Pie bounced out from the kitchen. The mare seemed to screech so hold as she saw Cupcake sitting in the light and heard small sobs rising from her. Mrs. Kink! called Pinky, trying to her and nestling beneath her chin, laying her head to that of the older mare. What's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? Oh, Pinkie Pie, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just missing my daddy again. Cause I got a letter about him, don't you know? She says she leaned into the puffy pink mane and let her head rest on the smaller mare as she offered her embrace. Together they sat there, sharing little remembrances of the departed stallion as ponies went by the window. Piggy recalled how he had always given her and her sisters cookies or candies when a family had come by to the house or office. I'm sorry, Pinky, said Cupcake, trying to smile as the tears still ran down her face. I'm whippy. Don't quite know why. It's a king, 
said Pinky as she called something her own mother had said a long time ago. It's okay to cry. It really, really, really is okay to cry. He was a good guy, and he earned every tear. But it's happy now. I'm sure of it. I'm super duper absolutely sure of it, Skink. And Cookie gave a small sigh and looked down to Pinky. As he did, Pinky smiled back up at her and touched her nose to the mare gently. With that, the two sat until Carrot returned. The stallion staring happily as the two of the most important mares of his life greeted him in the door. Pinkie Pie came bounding through the human kitchen, mop and bucket at the ready. As the pink mare went spinning and galloping through the space, she quickly worked to clear away any standing water. As she went, she explained her situation, explained how she'd begun to take a bath, but then realized that Gummy needed a bath before she left, and she did not want to leave her dirty bed sheets behind over the holiday, so she tried to do it all at once, and on and on and on and on. They could always smile at her as she stopped in mid-step. Look at them quizzically as they stood over the gingerbread house with their umbrellas. Life with Pinkie Pie. It was a daring adventure. One that had added so much to their journey together. One they would not have missed out on for all the world. As her mop ran across everything, she sped off again, leaving them free to lower the umbrellas, certain that she would have the matter cleared up. She had grown here in this bakery. She was stronger now, notwithstanding all that had happened in her own life. In fact, all the challenges that she and her friends had faced only seemed to strengthen her, a growth that they saw with relief and joy. They watched her grow with smiles across their faces, proud of the mare whose adult life had begun here under their watch, who they were stronger for having helped and guided. Hey! Do you guys think that this is an origin story for Pinkie Pie and this is basically saying how she became the mare we all know and love? I think it is! Cupcake looked up to her husband once more. Still saw the white dollop of frosting sitting across his nose. And once more found it a place in her thoughts. As he prepared to box up the gingerbread house, her happiness once more showed on her face. As he wondered what exactly the spoonful of frosting would be. Once upon a hard metal examination table, a beautiful mare had sat using tissue after tissue. Her tears running down her hospital gown. As she waited for her body to stop throbbing in pain, many different thoughts ran through her head. One of the thoughts was, if they were truly denied having folds of their own, what would their lives look like? Nearly a decade later, she knew the answer to that question, knew that having Pinkie Pie in the bakery with them had provided them with some point to fill that space. As Pinkie and that network of friends grew, somehow they too were drawn to the world of cakes. Not folds of their own, yet reasonable facilities of any levels. New faces came into their lives, ranging from the humble and meek to ponies whose powers they could hardly even ponder. Oh, there's this new Pegasus in town. She floated on by. Her name is Fluttershy. She sounds really, really soft spoken. Say hello, Fluttershy. Uh, she, she takes a while, Mr. and Mrs. Geek, but I'm sure we're going to be best of best friends. As he stood in the kitchen drying dishes, she could not know the first such entrance was happening on the other side of the swinging doors. Carrot winced as he saw the delivery ponies attempt to break the crate into the door front door. As they did, it chipped the paint off the frame and scuffed the wooden floor. As the unfolding tragedy revealed itself, the crate came to a sudden stop right in the middle of the showcase room, which took a cute corner. Most of his frustration and amusement the other customers were talking about. <laughs> called the Pinkie Pie, who bounded swiftly around the crate, ending with her hose held high above her. And once he looked at Karen, fixed it with an inquiring stare. What is it? He checked to packaging level to be sure. When he was certain, he called out the cupcake. Honey bun! He spoke. His enthusiasm guarding her attention as she trotted out from the kitchen. Pinkie Pie's enthusiasm was already evident. Even as Cupcake approached, she was already pulling at the boards. It seemed to nod at them. He pulled her away by her tail, making her drop the crowbar when she had been about to assault the crate. As often the case, their lifelong friends they had made in the swamp upon their honeymoon and sent them another gift. As the smells of citrus rose from the cake, once more feeling sugar cube corn with the scent of things he remembered. They used some of the fruit in their own recipes, but the understanding, of course, was that some would be sold in the shop. And replying what supplies of fine fabrics and goods not so easily found in southern Equestria. 
the train spinning the well wishes of the distant friends who had always seemed as close as they ever made. Only difference this time was that the creek was so vast. As Carrie took up the crowbar and used it in a much more gentle fashion than it seemed that Pinky had been determined to use. As he pulled away the boards, the reasons for the vastness of the crate revealed. Inside it stood a series of boxes, rather traditional one or two. Each one marked with what it contained. It kind of smells like that time I worked on the Kungcraft farm, began Pinky, bouncing around trying to appear within. And I remember smell because I would always smell the Kungcraft when I woke up, and when I went to sleep, I would like to see Kungcraft. Oh my! began Cupcake as he looked over Carrot's shoulder while Pinky bounced around him and attempted to get a better view. It must have been a good growing year. What you like at that? began Carrot. We have oranges and nectarines, lemons and limes, and he only switched a second to stare in the eyes of his assailant before it was upon him. What? cried Carrot, spinning wildly as something bit down on him. As Cupcake and Pinkie Pie looked on, Carrot went around the room with his voice high in the arm, and something dangled from his nose. Something that stared back at him with big purple eyes. Slowly began to calm, realizing that whatever it was did not seem to be doing much. In truth, it just started dangle there with the moist presence. Eventually, Carrot came to a standstill in front of Cupcake and Pinkie Pie, emitting a low kind of whine of trepidation as his eyes went up to the mares, back to the creature that stood fixed with his muscle. Why, it's a little alligator said Cupcake, looking at her husband over her as her fear washed away. It was replaced by something like a pleasant surprise. Can you get him off of my nose? asked the dubious carrot, tilting his head back and forth and staring cross-eyed at the little creature that still guessed at him. He stared back at him with purple eyes that seemed to blink in a manner that seemed out of sync with one another. Gently, Cupcake and Pinky pulled the alligator off of him making reassuring noises as it somehow came to croak and chirped back out. To their surprise, Pinky collapsed it off and gathered it into her hooves, rubbed out his shoulders along its stomach. The little alligator made a croaking, chirping sound in reply. As he placed it down on his floor and simply stood there looking back out with purple eyes. Poor little thing must be thirsty. All the boxes were in the even oven. It must be famous, don't you know? He said Cupcake as he led Pinky towards the kitchen. Carrot Cake was once again left alone in the showcase room, a few customers having fled screaming into the streets at the mention of the word alligator. Carrot crossed his eyes to study his nose. He surprised there were no scratches. Could the little creature have no... He leaned closer to where it sat in the middle of the floor and blinked. Hey there, he said in a quiet tone as he pressed the little creature. Say there, you aren't so bad now, Art! It hissed down. He danced his nose in place. I looked back to the kitchen as the mares returned. Oh, he's so scared and hungry and thirsty, you need somebody to look after him and take care of him and throw him parties and make him little outfits? As the cakes watched, Pinkie Pie followed the creature around the room. Her host seemed to be full of energy and her smile only getting wider. I I honestly don't think it has any teeth, said Kara as he watched Cupcake lay a few pieces of food around the creature. You got no teeth? Oh, ain't that funny? You got no teeth? Hey, I'll get him! said Pinkie Pie, picking up the hatch like and spinning it around the room. As the cakes looked on with their eyebrows arching, the little creature slipped the grass and began biting all over, and that just seemed to be an imperfect mix of excitement, affection, and predation. With that, Pinkie deposited the creature in a punch bowl, only its eyes and tails visible as it floated among the contents. Look, he likes it! The little uh, guy here likes it, he all going, because he doesn't have any teeth, so I'm going to call call going. Can I keep up? So he said with unrestrained enthusiasm. Pinky spun to a stop directly in front of them with a white smile. On that, she looked into the bolt of them as the reptile stared back at him with unnerving eyes, then once more lost her synchronization. Well, said Carrot, regarding his assailant skeptically. Once he against Pinky lifted it up from the punch bowl to deposit a small snacks. It's hardly a typical pet, and you know in time... In an instant, she felt a familiar huff on his foreleg. He followed Cupcake's gaze to where Pinky was sitting with the alligator. She already seemed so occupied with it, concerned for it, responsible for it. She could learn so much, Cupcake whispered in his ear. One part of Carrot simply wanted to call animal control and be done with it. He communicated this to his wife through his eyes. A reassuring ones met his. The case required the scene a bit longer and gave the consent. 
Pinkie Pie grabbed up the hatchling once more, and spun around happily as it climbed its jaws shut around her tail. With that, she hugged her buff and trotted upstairs to fill the tub, giving it some place to rest as she completed her chores. The cakes watched her go, once more amazed by something a pink mare had brought with into their lives. There's an alligator living in our bakery, Ginger snapped, said Carrie in a sing song voice. Cupcake giggled, placed her four legs across his back, and nibbled at his ears in a way that she knew he adored. And you are the kids. She scolded as he slipped beside him, running her body the length of his as her playful tone announced the smirk and the offense in his statement. I still do, he said with a voice above a whisper. She looked up, saw him smiling back to her. With that, she ran her body along the length of his again, ending beneath his chin with a series of nuzzles. Oh, I do too, she says. He rubbed her head beneath all the way down to his chest and up again. Liz, that act let him know that her heart was still open to that faraway place. Even with the magic seemed to keep it far behind her eyes and... Oh, and th th this man here, her name is Raggy, and oh, you've already met? Did she help out with your wedding dress? Oh, that's so cool! You now already just met besties. Come on, Randy, let's go! Life with Pinkie Pie. It was never boring. To their surprise, it was also rather, well, profitable. The pink mare was a well of energy, seemingly unable to expend it all. She was constantly trying to meet every customer, seeming to get to know every pony in Ponyville. As Pinkie grew to know more and more ponies, the more ponies would come to Sugar Cube Corn to greet her and spend time with her. Spend a few bits as they did. So, um... I jumped up too high, and I bumped into this weather pony. Her name was Rainbow Dash, and, well, now we're weather buddies, and she told me that to make up for it, I could give her the biggest cake ever for free. I'll pay for it. Before long, Karen had to place a few tables outside the shop. Cooking found herself recreating her days as a caterer, as she saw to the ponies eating outside, those who had made friends with Pinkies and other friends. It's more than just a bunny, as Pinky had a propensity to eat almost a day's earnings in a few monstrous butts, apparently fueling her endless energy. No, it was also the way her increasing her social circle. It's the way she was feeling their bakery of laughter and music. It's the way they would sit together and eat their meals, almost like family. Oh, oh! This is Apple Dad! She says she's gonna let a lot of her apples to make all those delicious apple pies! Oh, and we're best friends now! It was the way she would have quiet talks with Cupcake about little things. The way she learned from the older mare. It was the way she huddled behind Carrot upon seeing a bat in the attic that she prepared another party. When she would ask them to giggle at certain ghosties, ones that were most presented and sometimes metaphorical, they would come to help her. It was the way they were learning from her. Growing because she was a part of their lives. This, then, is what evoked the word family, and it seemed so very real. Karen and Cupcake had never really done much on the night of Summer Sun celebration. Dear, 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 big point, big point. They respected the sovereign as much as any pony, but the thought of spending the early morning hours among thrones and ponies was not nearly as appealing as spending them together. There was a suspended sitting in the ca in a little parlor, or at most at the big house where Cheesecake and Whistlingwell gathered Cupcake's extended family. On this, Pinky differed. As the day drew on, Cupcake wondered how her young apprentice would be passing the night. Wondered what type of night the pink mare would have unfold before her. She could hardly guess. As Cupcake stepped behind the counter, she found her attention being pulled to the cash register drawer. She wondered if it had been cleaned at all. She carefully pulled out the trays and looked at the liner. To her surprise, two pamphlets lay there, once dated nearly a decade earlier. Foster care. Adoption. Her eyes lingered over them a great long while. He obviously brought them home with him at some point. The days upon them were not that long after he learned the magic was not answering them. She so began to lift her voice to call him when a ball of energy burst into the room. Mrs. Cake! Mrs. Cake! Called Pinkie Pie, swimming about and gathering up supplies of the wormhouse and... I just found a new pony and she's a unicorn and she's got a dragon! I was like, oh my gosh, I've never seen her before, so she must be a new pony! If she's a new pony in Ponyville, that must mean she doesn't know any pony yet! 
Good King wants his Pinkie Pie continues to zoom about. As he did, a small pile of party supplies grew in the showcase room. So I thought that she doesn't know anybody. She must have not made any friends. And she doesn't have any friends. And she must be lonely. And that made me sad. And so that made me sad. I thought that must make her sad. And I don't like that time. So I thought about Lisa and she could be parties. Of course, the best lady does is bring. Cookie still stared at Pinkie Pie as a small mountain of supplies seemed to fit a suspiciously small saddle bag. Only her party can seemed to be an answer from the sack that disappeared within. On that, Pinkie seemed to go up the stairs, yet emerged from the basement door. Boop! So... Now I'm gonna go to the library and set it up, and then I'll bring everybody there with a great big super giant or super giant because we're welcome party for it. And then we'll go to see how and for summer since I'll and we have a really, really, really good day. Bing! Inside it is that Cupcake felt herself wrapped up in one of Pinky's marvelous hugs, the mirror appearing beside her from out of nowhere and disappearing just as quickly. Oh, that's so nice. Have fun now. So he called her, watching as the smiley face bounced out the door. Hello, this is Destiny calling. I thought so. Silence hung over the bakery once again. Cookie looked down and saw that, despite all that does happen, her hope was still holding up the liner, revealing the two pamphlets to the light. She smiled over them. With that, she lowered the liner once more. Despite his good intentions, the lights had not moved in that direction. The life of a young mare had been planted among theirs, for whatever reason, and she was happy for it. With that, she slid the pamphlet's rest once more, slid the drawer back within the register. The cakes sat up together longer into the night and deep into the morning. They did all the small things they always wished to do together that they rarely had time for. They read poetry, listened to music, looked through albums and wrote letters. This is how they passed the sorest night of the year. This is they had for nearly a decade apart from those years at the big house, where the noise of teenagers and awkward conversation with Cupcake's brothers nearly drove Carrot mad. Together they took their coffees, their caffeine fueling them, Sat from a large picture window at the bakery, and away to the dawning of the summer sun. Yet, the sun did not come. Oh my! Said Cupcake as the man's pass. You, you don't think that coming down here to Ponyfield through the Princess Alpha touched to you? I, I don't know, Sugar Cope. Sugar Plum? Spoke Carrot, thinking his hope for her head. You wouldn't think so, weren't you? Together, they continued to stare out of the pre dawn darkness. Harding what could be going on in the city hall whose spire and flags were just visible in the darkness over the nearby buildings. Their eyes went wide as ponies began running through the streets. They looked at one another as they saw fear planted across the eyes of those who carried open the door with cupcake at his side as he tried to make sense of what was happening. Nightmare Moon! called a pony that pelted past. One of the usual customers apparently seeing the confusion on their faces. The Mayor of the Moon! It was a name that should not exist, one that lived only of fairy stories. Together they looked to the moon and saw that it had deed changed. Despite every part of their logical minds telling you it could not be happening, they knew. They believed. Pinky! Cupcake breathed as he looked to her husband. Inside an instant, the cakes were struggling forward past the crowd, trying to head towards City Hall as pony streamed in the other direction of darkness. As they did, Carrot tried to pick out familiar faces of the crowd. Cast the eyes of the customers he knew. Hey, Big Macintosh, have you seen Pinky Pie? Turkey Cord, do you know where Pinky is? Sparker, Sparker, did you see Pinky? With the mayor who works at my bakery? He says, pony slid past him. As each apologized, he moved on to the next, keeping so close to Cupcake as they approached City Hall. Can you help us, please? As he asked the crowd at Lawrence, some pony stopping to look at her before being swept away. Oh, can somebody help us? See, it says they came upon the steps of the circular structure. We can't find Pinkie Pie. Have you seen her? Has anyone seen Pinkie Pie? Have you seen her? Da Daughter. Karen spun to her as soon as he heard the word. It looked upon her just in time to see her bounce through the last utterance of it. To see the words shake through her. The cupcake stood and looked up to him. Her eyes already missing and over. The side of the rose highlighted even in the purple and tiny light. He sat before her, and then since he was back at one place in the world, he felt safest. Pressed to his chest as the forelegs ran across her, wrapped her closer to him. Cuppy! Cuppy! Carrot! Called in a familiar voice. Savory script called out orders to those few ponies who had maintained their senses. She tried down to them, looked down upon her best friends with worry. Ivory! 
said Carrot. Do you know where Pinkie Pie is? Did she come here? What happened? As Ivory explained what transpired, Cookie looked at her head and listened intently. Pinkie Pie had gone off with a group of other mares, led it seemed by a young unicorn who Ivory believed to have some sort of grasp on the situation. The news brought Cupcake no comfort. As the square around City Hall began to vacate, the two sat there together, Cupcake still finding reassurance in his embrace. They walked through the city streets of the bakery wordlessly. They sat in the picture window together, looking out into the streets and covering one another with their presence for long hours. When the sun did erupt into the sky, they found a line across one another, the weary faces coming awake looking perhaps more worried to the parents than they knew. When Pinkie Pie came trying back to the bakery, her detailed account of what had inspired was instantly muffled beneath a massive hug. When as he returned gladly, his two ponies rocked her and cried over her. Strings of causality. They are the very fabric of fate. They twist and stretch, snarl and get caught and snagged. They also lie beside one another, woven and knit. One can only tie. Many through bind and hundreds of clothes. As the beloved stallion now departed from his mortal life and not gone grumbling through the streets, then Piggy Pie would never have found a place of refuge with these two ponies. If Cupcake and Carrot Cake had not fought so hard to force their lives together, the Cheesecake would never have entered Piggy's life, never helped her truly understand who she was. If the Cakes had not opened their lives to her and accepted her so fully, then she would never become the bright, shining, Pinkie Pie to all who knew her and loved and cherished. If she never become that Pinkie Pie, there would not have been a place for the element of laughter to hang so lightly. An Equestria would have been damned to the eternity of night under the cold gaze of the mirror of darkness. Love makes the strings, pulls them tire, pulled into her into their lives, and helped Pinkie share hers with them. Soon her friends, D6 and the Dragon Whelp, they became a frequent set of visitors to Sugar Cube Corner as any other. In fact, they seemed to be at times to be part of the very life of the place. It was the strings that kept pulling them together. They helped them through the hard times. Times when Parasprites had flown around and attempted to devour all they had worked for. Only Pinky's randomness that they had taken as a part of their lives saved them all. The string pulled them in times of laughter. When they too played hearts in the little games and jokes her friends had learned to play under her guidance. Times when they joined into pranks and made themselves part of a farce about cursed cookies and enchanted alligators. The strings guided them through the happy times, the times when their family had come together and celebrated their 10th anniversary and the celebration that Pinky had planned, as they had danced together like they had it to dance so long ago when their tuts first met together. The strings continued to bring ponies to their lives. Twilight Sparkle had been a meticulous planner. She had selected the downstairs rather than the attic so there would be free movement around Sugar Cube Corner, making it easier for the guests of honor to be served directly from the kitchen. The case had simply listened, as the unicorn had planned everything from the seating arrangements to the menu, watching as her dragon weld walked behind her and copied down her words as he paced back and forth. When the day arrived, Karen found a new face in his kitchen. As he gave simple instructions, he found a dragon whelp, Spike, excited to play his part. The king even produced a little chef's uniform for him, one he immediately adored and wore proudly. As he tried it out into the showcase room and the side rooms, he saw all the happy faces that had assembled. How's everybody doing? he asked, his smile only getting larger as he neared his wife and the guests who sat in a humble bakery. Good, good. Is there anything we can get for you, dearie? asked Cupcake, jumping to a touch of her choice of words. Oh, I be, I be, it's the guest. Everything is fine, Mr. and Mrs. King, replied the immortal sitting behind their table, looking up to them from across the best teacup they had. Together, they looked down over the crowd. Tingwas as the guests strolled beneath the couple decorations that only Pinky could have set in their place, taxing even Twilight's ability to control. They circled around the bakery, Cupcake bringing trays of treats around to the assembled guests. It was a small gathering, casual as it could be, for having the very looming volume of deep magic using her grandmother's old teacup and having guards posted at the doors. Cupcake tried to remember that as she dealt with the fact of foibles of the afternoon. 
Piggy's friend Rarity seemed to have a breakdown of the thought straining her dress. Piggy herself apparently snatched a cupcake out of the very magic of her seemingly defiant guest of honor. As Cupcake quickly dragged Pinky away and gave a quick lesson on interacting with divinities, Carrot brought Celestia another cup of tea and a new cupcake. As her teacup emptied, he heard his wife shout across the showcase room. As her sight was at the floor, Empty teacup at four o'clock! She called just to her huff. I see it, honey bun! He called back, leaving it to action, quickly pouring another key, key cup for the alicorn. Oh, um, thank you, answered the immortal. Not at all, your highness! Answered Carol with a bow. In an instant, she had emptied the cup, large with frame of the sovereign simply taking larger steps than those who surrounded her. At once, Cupcake filled her cup, racing from the other side of the room, and beginning a chain of filling and emptying. A look of small concern flashed across Celestia's face as she looked down over her children, these two hearth ponies. They were only trying to please her. If she was to try not so hard, they had already done so much on her behalf. A look of playful cunning slipped her, and with fun motion she tried to carry it into pouring her a new cup. One that fell into a cup that was already full. Gotcha. I love that moment with Celestia. As the sheepish look went to cross Carrot's face, Celestia smiled down and down. Cupcake Sherry to smile for Sovereign, realizing what she had done. And contrary to popular belief, that does not make her a troll, that just makes her a pony who likes fun. After a moment, Carrot recovered too. So he understood, saw that there was something buried there, something that fell across from the alicorn softly as he looked across them, across all memories of ponies in the room. Carrot looked down upon the two smiling figures, the alicorn and earth pony mare. Memory hit him, one of Cupcake dresses the alicorn that sat near them on a nightmare night long ago. As the radiant bee fell from the princess, he could certainly see it reflected in the mare he loved. In that instant, he was very thankful for both of the divine creatures of the night. Outside, every script passed back and forth, important issues on her mind. The thought of interrupting this party troubled her. He knew that it was something that was big and important, and her two best friends were hosting. Yet friendship or not, she had a duty to perform. Forgive me, Cuppy, get it, she said in a whisper. With that, she advanced to the guards. As they eyed her, she kept her head level. Please inform her majesties that Ivory Skip, Mayor of Ponyfield, she said slowly, moving her eyes between them, and said that urgent issues she must discuss at her earliest convenience. The two royal guards ponies looked at one another, and with that went off to whisper the matter to the princess. Half an hour later, the party had been cleared away and the sound distance being washed and cleaned across the kitchen. The sound of crockery full of leftovers finding its way into the icebox, the single resident notes of teacups being placed back in the cupboard joined them in a small chorus. The bell above the door rang out, adding to its own sound to the refrain that was sounding through the bakery. But you see whoever that is, honey bun, my hose are full, said Carrot, nervously wobbling along with his forelegs full of china. Oh, Macy! She answered. She tried out of the kitchen into the showcase room. With that, she once more entered the presence of the prancer Celestia Fidicus. The alcorn had returned to their humble bakery. Oh, hello again, dearie. Oh, I mean, your majesty. She said with a little bow. What is it that brings you back to us? I do wish to thank you for hosting this get-together, said the sovereign, more amazed to turn around on magic unseen. Twilight had been planning it for so long. Oh, it was no problem at all. Twilight was a delight to work with dearie and I mean, majesty. She exclaimed with a smile, trying again to recover from her use of the word. No sense of impiety seemed to fall from the alicorn. No disgust seemed to follow her use of such a common name. Instead, the opposite seemed true. And so the princess seemed to grow happier as the two smiled to one another. I was wondering if you perhaps see my pet bird. I asked Celestia as she looked at her hoof and pointed to where the stand was stood. I have not seen her since the party. Oh, no, no, no. I have it, your majesty. Mr. Cupcake said. I don't have to your mouth. Let, let me ask her if she heard see. Oh. Interrupted Celestia, still smiling over the mare that stood over her. Tan is quite all right. She has propensity to get into all sorts of trouble. I'm sure she'll show up. The two mares stood there in the afternoon delight, blinking to one another in the sunlight that the alcorn had raised over her domain. I was also wondering if I might purchase some pastries. The court loves to try some from all over Equestria. I would like to display some of yours. 
added the sovereign as he looked upon the wares of Sugar Cube Corner. But of course, we'd be honored, dear Majesty, added Cupcake. Smile grew wider. I am very glad. Smoked the unicorn as he gracefully turned to look upon Cupcake. I shall have my Chamberlain send for them. Send for your step in and a courier. And once her smile dropped, Celestia's friends became one sympathy as Cupcake's face fell down to reflection. The face of the sovereign tilting as she mused over the expressions that were now filling her child. So, Cupcake, thousands of unanswered infants flew around. The pain of ten years of trying to no fail swept up inside her. Before her stood perhaps the only living being in the question that could answer her questions. Offer some solace. With a rush of emotion, she moved to ask her sovereign if it was possible that the journey might still bring her to that place. Please, Majesty, Princess, she began, trembling a little as she fenced her thoughts. I, I'm sorry to be so bold, you know, but I had to ask. Um, you see, Karen and I have wanted, wanted to, but tried to. The fall holes in the alcorn sounded out across the wind floors. With a single motion, Celestia lowered her head to that cupcake. She kissed her forehead once, and then ran her face along Cupcake's tenderly. Cupcake felt the power that laid there. Inside her mind, pastel colors shifted about and darted on Cloudscape. She so felt powerful and deep magic sift around her, as though were being examined and questioned. Beyond her, a well opened up in more colors, one that seemed to waft around her and cradle her. Inside, two golden spears wafted on silver clouds, darting about and flying to her. Orbiting her in what seemed like peals of laughter. After a moment, her sovereign's hand lifted to her ear. Visit fell out of Cupcake's eyes and mine as a gentle voice filled her. They are going to be beautiful, Cupcake, whispered the alicorn, the words falling lightly over the earth pony. With that, Celestia brushed a straight wave out of her way and mane out of her face. She smiled over a confused Cupcake once more and deprived Sugar Cube Corner in search of her wayward phoenix. If there's one biggest surprise that the years have brought over through this long journey I've been on is this little microphone Yeti. I mean, I never really expected to have such a big present after I was done my classes for my current job. And I wasn't expecting to be rewarded with this. But I've always told myself that I wanted to improve my life. And this was the first step. Getting this nice big microphone. I've had this Yeti for a few years now and I'm still surprised that I ever got along without it. So many things have changed. New house, new studio. I've gotten a whole bunch of new toys I could play with that I could pretend are my employee. Fellow employees, compatriots who could show up randomly as guests. Or even just taking the time to just look around the studios that I sit in and just enjoy my day. I guess that's one of the big things these 10 years have brought me. Chains, happiness, and a whirlwind of adventure. 